Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel. In this lesson, we are going to learn a lot of things about rhythm, about harmony, about intervals, some simple music theory concepts. So it's sort of like an all-round music lesson. I, I would recommend it not just for piano players. Of course, it's going to be taught on the piano, but... Uh, the inspiration actually came from the guitar and the bass and the instruments which can play what we call as spread chord. So instead of playing a triad like this, I'm, I'm interested to share with you in this lesson how people play triads like this, which is more of a spread chord. So instead of playing like that, one, three, five, you take the middle note of the position of that inversion and just drive it up the octave. So where this can really help is when you want to play stuff really low on the piano. So you can go really low. Now if I were to play that same uh, note back to where it was and play a B major chord, this is how B major sounds in the left hand. Sounds horrible, right? So a great way to improve that would be to use spread shapes. You could also call them as open voiced chords. Where, but I prefer to just call them spread chords because the triad, what we normally learn like this is bigger. So I'm going to introduce you to a really cool chord progression. Then we are going to see how we can play that with our two hands, developing patterns using spread voicing. Then we are going to try and play that pattern using a lot of interval uh, combos, using different intervals and practicing our intervals. And last but not least, we are going to try and drive this project across different time signatures, trying to play it across a 6, 8, 5, 8, 7 by 8. And let's see where that goes from there. Simple exercise, lots to learn, stick around till the end. There's a lot to do in this one because we are not just talking about some chord pattern or some melody or some independent exercise. You could call it like a hybrid of all. Okay, guys. So before we get cracking, get your keyboards out, get a pen, paper or whatever you like to write with. Um, and it'll be great if you give the video a like. Leave us a comment if you like the lesson and tell us what you think we should do next. And uh, yeah, but don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. That'll be awesome. There's a bell somewhere there. Hit that bell for regular notifications so you don't miss a lesson from our music school. Right? And for additional learning, there's always Patreon. There's our website with structured uh, video courses. And there's our music school, which you can learn from virtually... Uh, we have online programs or you can do our offline programs by, by coming here. Well, of course, now it may be a bit tricky with the COVID situation, which is why, for the most part, a lot of the courses, curriculum, which our school does, is online. Uh, and that's how it's been going strong thus far. So let's now get cracking with the lesson. I'm going to first show you the chords. B minor, D major, F sharp minor. E major. Which scale is this all part of? It's part of a three sharp scale. So you could argue it's either F sharp minor or A major. I'm just going to think of it as A major since knowing the chords of a major scale comes to us a bit more naturally, you could say. So B minor, that's chord number two. D major, that's chord number four, major of the scale. F sharp minor, chord number six of the scale. E major chord number 5 of the scale popularized by Daft Punk of course a lot of their songs have this sort of progression <clears throat> very modern dance kind of chord progression right uh, it doesn't sound very classical or rock like I think it's more uh, dance pop kind of uh, music so how am I playing these chords? So let me first share that with you. B minor is B, D, F sharp. But I'm not playing it as B, D, F sharp like that. I'm dividing it across my two hands. Playing B, the fifth, F sharp, and then the higher D. Okay? So instead of playing the D here, I'm getting a more open sound. Root, fifth, higher, octave, third. 
Now you could also do this with one hand. You could use your pedal. Hold the pedal so that you don't choke this bee. Keep the bee lingering or keep the root lingering. I would advise you to first do it with two hands and then do it with one hand. So with two hands, I'll tell you the pattern shortly. But I hope you got the formation. Root, fifth, third, upper third. Or we also call this as the tenth interval. Tenth meaning to tell us that it's eight, nine, ten. Eight being the octave. So third above the octave. Okay, first chord B minor is played in tenths or spread voicing. Next chord is D major. You just jump the whole equation down to D. There we go. So D, A, F sharp. Why again? Because F sharp should not be here. We spread it out. Sounds great. Even lower. B minor. D major. D major. Sounds really good everywhere. Even... Sounds good on the whole piano actually. Maybe chords were meant to be played this way. So uh, B minor, D major, F sharp minor. What's F sharp minor? F sharp, A, C sharp. We add the A on the top end as to avoid that clutter. Remove the A, bring it there. <clears throat> there we go. And then resolve it back to E major again the G sharp from here will sit itself there okay whole thing again B minor D major F sharp minor E major that's the progression there we go so now that we've learned the chords B minor D major F sharp minor, E major. Let's now put them into a nice pattern. I want to start off with a nice 3 by 4 arpeggio sequence with both my hands. Here's how it sounds. There we go. How did I uh, voice? How did I uh, play the pattern? One and two and three and. So I'm trying to keep my pinky down, hold it down for the whole scenario. One and two and three and. One and two and three and. One and two and three and. And two and three and one. And one and two, three and one, two. Not to be confused with six, eight. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, two. Six, eight will be one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, eight has two strong beats. Three by four has three strong beats. Tak, ta, din, tak, ta, din, tak, tak, din, tak, tak. Two, three, one, two. Three one two three one and now tuck, tuck. okay now let's build it from there so we have our six eight pattern before we build it actually you may want to pause the video or do it later where you can try and work on dynamics dynamics means play it with a lot of volume swells crescendos as we call it or you know legato staccato you know I, so there are many ways of developing it one is if i say crescendo just volume swells just that get louder over time another way to embellish with dynamics would be to imagine a drummer playing with you and uh, target the snare drum and hit the snare drum a bit louder. So, 
sad snad or you know that could be the drum groove kick kick snare kick kick snare snare so wherever you imagine the snare drum would be where you're going to play this stuff a bit louder crescendo following the drummer the snare uh, in particular you can also do dynamics by just changing between legato staccato staccato legato coming up Another thing I like to do is play it in different registers like See how each register feels Maybe you want to play the lower one little louder and then expand it see every register sounds different so that's what i meant by dynamics so what are the four ways you can incorporate dynamics may not be now while watching the video but later on uh, as you keep practicing focus on it being crescendo volume up and down to target the drum kit see which aspects of the drums you'd like to embellish the snare or the open hats could he also help um playing legato staccato or that way uh, playing in different regions of the piano you know that also has a very very different vibe okay now that we've got the 6 8 pattern with a lot of dynamic content let's now drive it forward so i'm going to drive it forward rhythmically as well as intervillically or harmonically you could say let's start with the harmonic aspects so it's very simple you take the 3 by 4 pattern 1 2 3 and so 1 and 2 and 3 and at that end of the last beat of the 3 by 4 or the last sub beat which is 1 2 3 4 5 6 the sixth beat or the end of the 3 you're not going to play the designated chord tone that you're going to play a new note and the new note you will have to look at your top finger in this case d for 5 6 and now start deciding intervals with respect to the top note of each chord so first i want to play the second degree so what is d second e and these are not just any seconds they are diatonic seconds so they are diatonic to the a major scale you may want to check out the chart which we have prepared where we have written down pretty much all the intervals the seconds thirds fourths fifths sixths and sevenths it's all on patreon uh, second 2 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and got it now we need to continue it with the other chords and then the fun will really happen 1 and 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 and 3 and and 2 and 3 so remember you don't want to do that's not part of the a scale that's like an accidental so we go that's a g sharp which is very much part of the a major scale that's why I check out the chart it will help you so okay that's another second degree another second from a diatonic to a major you'll get a b and you'll get an a cluster after g sharp one more time the whole thing this is with a second embellishment at the top with respect to the top note of the chord d e f sharp g sharp a b g sharp a what i also like to do if possible is stress on that note make it a little more longer sounds beautiful i think just making that note a little longer L 
requires a little bit of finger juggling as i call it like that you may have to do that or use the pedal but the pedal squishes it up a bit so that's cleaner don't worry about your fingers getting messed up or looking a bit unorthodox or ugly if you want to call it that it's what matters here right so the ear has to enjoy it so do whatever it takes so see if you can make that last note ring Now that the second degrees are done, let's now move to the third degrees, which is D to its F sharp, F sharp to its A, A to its C sharp, G sharp to its B. One more time. Thirds at the end. Slowly. Let's try fourths, which sound very, very interesting. D's diatonic fourth is G sharp. So another fourth, fourth. I kind of like the fourths the most. sounds a bit unpredictable now let's look at fifths you don't want to do ouch that's not part of the a scale so you'll then be choosing a diminished fifth instead of the perfect fifth there'll be one diminished fifth in every major scale right seventh to its diminished fifth so you go fifths then we can try sixths again try to sustain it if you can and then we end with sevens which is the last interval very artistic d c sharp f sharp e a very sharp, very big jump right a to the g sharp g sharp to the f sharp again okay that's your sevens so we've covered all the interval degrees so it's a great tool to i think help you learn your intervals of a particular scale in this case a major scale and consider practicing it on a few more scales over over your weeks or days of practice i'd like to leave you guys with one small thing from the rhythm department because we cannot do a a lesson on this youtube channel without talking about rhythm right so i've saved that for last so do stay tuned and um, If you haven't already do consider a copy of the notes which will be available on Patreon uh, there'll also be a midi track of whatever it is I've played so if there are any intricate things which you find found useful in the lesson and you wanted to really dive in and digest what exactly I played you can import that midi file into your computer program which could be a DAW recording program or an app like synthesia which allows you to uh, you know just see each note as it's being played right the youtube video is obviously a good resource but then you have these other resources which may help okay so the last thing rhythmically would be to add or make this or convert this into different time signatures how do we do that i'm going to show you one There we go. So how do I count this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven so what do i do i'm just changing my pattern a little bit but i also don't want to get confused with this new time signature which is seven so i will prefer to count it like one two three four one two three one two three four one two three one two three four one you could also say tak dhimi tak it tak dhimi tak it so it's easier to break up such a big number seven it's not that big a number but it is big compared to four so one two three four one two three one two three four one two three tak dhimi tak it tak dhimi tak it ta tak dum tak dum tak or you could do seven as tak it tak dhimi tak it tak dhimi one two three one two three four Three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. Every both have a different groove, isn't it? So, so let me show you both. Let me show you four meets three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Remember what I said. The last note could be changed. Four, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. 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 One, two, three. Three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. Na 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 na. Let's flip that around. Three meeting four. One two three. One two three 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 four. this exercise to 7 you can also do 5 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 just 5 is 6 1 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 or you can do any time signature really if it's a big number like 9 you can say 5 meeting 4 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 quite like 9 We have these conical phrases as well. I'm thinking of doing a detailed lesson on uh, conical phrases and how we can use that for accents, grouping, beat divisions, and so on. So do stay tuned to the channel. There'll be more lessons on that front. So let's just recap everything and then conclude the lesson, guys. We've taken four chords in spread voicing: B minor, D major, F sharp minor. E major. Then we've made a pattern out of it. Started off with six eight. Brought in a lot of dynamics into the party. Then we looked at interval embellishments at the very end or the last beat. Twos, threes, fours, fives, six, seven, and then we put it together. This is fours, for example, and at the very end of the lesson, I talked about these odd time signatures, as they call it, like seven. Seven, five, nine. I think I demonstrated here. So do check it out. Do practice it hard. Do check my notes, which will help supplement your learning on Patreon. And if you found the lesson a bit more advanced for your liking, I hope you enjoyed it still. But if you found it a bit advanced and you wanted a bit more structured kind of learning, you can always consider our website. We have structured video curriculum at a foundational level, at an intermediate level. We have theory. Your training and it's ever growing. The it'll keep getting populated, and uh, if you prefer learning with me or our faculty, any instrument, uh, virtually or in person, you can get, uh, head over to our website nathanielschool.com, fill up a form, and you can uh, have a call with one of our course advisors. Thanks a ton for watching the lesson. I'm looking forward to doing the next one really soon and don't forget to share the video, like the video, leave us a comment, subscribe if you can to to the channel. The bell icon needs to be hit for regular notifications and 
You can also follow us and find us on Instagram. Uh, my channel, Jason Zach, and the school's channel, Nathaniel School. Thanks a ton for watching this lesson. Thanks for all your support for our channel. And we'll catch you soon. Cheers.